And right here in the front. LeBron and Killian with the San Francisco Chronicle. Um, there's a talking point since game one that you guys are um, going to be deflated after such a frustrating loss. I'm just wondering what your response to that is. Uh, I don't really have a response to it. How do you expect your team to come out tomorrow? Um, I expect us to come and play with the same uh, grit that we had in game one. And, um, you know, we made a lot of mistakes in game one. I expect us to be better. Uh, right here, Mark in the second row. Mark Schwartz, ESPN. LeBron, you've been through adversity your entire life, on, on the court, off the court. What have you learned since you were a young player or even a young person about how to overcome adversity that can help you in this particular situation after such a difficult game one loss? Uh, I mean, it's a new day. Um, and for me, um, you know, I woke up, you know, feeling ex excited about the opportunity for us to get better today. And um, excited about the opportunity that presents itself tomorrow and myself. But, um, you know, I can never compare the adversity I went through uh, when I was younger compared to playing basketball. This is just basketball. This, ain't, this is not adversity. And not when it, the things that I've been through in my life, this is, this is fun. And secondly, George Hill said yesterday that for him, game one was the toughest loss in his entire career. How can you as a leader help lift a player like that who maybe hasn't been through it before? Um, well, we both went through some of the same, you know, emotions. It's one of the toughest losses I've had in my career as well. Uh, just because everything that kind of went on with the game and the way we played and, you know, obviously we, I mean, we all know what happened in the game. So it was a tough, uh, you know, a tough 24 hours, uh, not only for, for G Hill, but for myself, for, for our whole ball club, because, uh, you know, we, we put ourselves in a great position to be successful. But um, like I said, you give yourself a day or, um, if you need to take two days, okay. But um, today you should feel excited about the opportunity to be better, uh, be better and be great. And, uh, and move forward. Tom on the right. Tom Haverster, Bleacher Report. Uh, LeBron, I know you've talked a lot about how important sleep is for your recovery and how vital it is for your performance. Sure. I remember back in Miami, Dwayne was always team no sleep. Um, but I was curious when you believed that sleep was this weapon for you and, and how that evolved throughout your career, whether you were prioritizing it when you were a rookie and when did that really impact you? Um. I think as you get older, you understand what will what, what benefit your body more and more. Um, you know, depending on what you you know put in your body as far as food and nutrition, things like that. How many hours a night that you tr you try to get? Now, some you know obviously some nights are different from others, um, but how much optimal sleep you you will want to get to help your body recover? Um, you know how much you know working out and things that you know that you do. I think every individual is different. Um, I found a great balance in what helps me be in the best possible shape I can be um, on a day-to-day -day basis, and I just try to follow that. But early in your career, did you have the same appreciation for it, or did you just learn over time? No. <laughs> I mean, I was 18 when I came into the league. I didn't <laughs> – I could do whatever I wanted to do. I could stay up throughout the whole night and, and play 48 minutes the next night and then not ice after the game and go right home. So, I mean, I was 18. I didn't even, I didn't even tape my rookie year. So, no, I'm, I'm totally different. Ken, in the back right. Ken Berger, Bleach Report, here to your right, LeBron. Um, years ago, there was a concept known as the Jordan Rules, just certain principles that teams believed they had to live by in order to defend him. Given all the approaches that you've seen throughout your career, all the coverages, all the different looks that you get from game to game in a series like this and even within a game, how would you define the LeBron Rules? Um, I don't think there are uh, LeBron Rules. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, for me personally, um, I think uh, a coaching staff puts together a game plan uh, that best suits his, uh, his team, uh, best suits the individual when going against myself and my teammates, and they try to be successful with that. Um, um, you know, obviously we all heard of the uh, quote, unquote, Jordan rules or whatever the case may be, and whoever decided to, to bring that notion up and um, a way to stop Jordan. but. I think more importantly, this is a um, this is a team game, and, and coaches, staffs put together uh, game plans that better that best fits their team, you know, to to stop that either that dynamic player, but also the rest of the guys on the floor as well. And, and what what would you say is the biggest difference in how you are defended now versus when you you're early in your career when you first came into the league? 
Um, there was parts of my game that you can disrespect early in my career. You can't do that now. Joe in the third row. Joe Varden, Cleveland.com. LeBron, we can't see it under your hat. So how's your how's your eye today? Uh, it's, uh, it's better. Um, it doesn't look better, but the docs told me it's better. And um, it's just going through a stages right now of recovering. But it looks worse than it did um, during the game. But it feels better. I have a different follow-up after this. But so did you basically score 51 points with one eye that was blurry? No, nah, I had some points before that already. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see now? I mean, is it is it still are you is it still blurry? Um, well, I'm taking my, my my medication that I've been given by the doctors. Um, you know, um, you know, my eye drops and my uh, you know antibiotic to help me with the recovery as fast as possible. But it's an eye. I mean, it's. Is going to recover as fast as it can on its own. It's nothing that you can do. It's not like I can like ice it or anything like that. Or you know, if I get more sleep or whatever case may be, I just have to naturally, organically let it heal. Um, like I said, it's been better, but it's better today than it was in game one. Um, like I said, it doesn't look better, but it feels a lot better. And then the other question I had was, as game one was starting, um, Dan Gilbert sent out a number of tweets, basically uh, with his thoughts on how this team made it to the finals this year. Were you aware of those tweets, and did you have any reaction to them after the game? No, nah, not aware. I'm not on social media right now, so um, I, I, I wasn't aware of that. I don't. It was his account, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> did <Did-oops. laughs> yeah. uh, Tim in the back right. Tim Reynolds, Associated Press, all the way in the back, Ron. One of the many things that you're obviously notorious for is getting to know the strengths and weaknesses of your teammates, from how they like the ball passed to them, to the spin, to the speed. And you've kind of taken that to a next level. Your time with JR, what have you learned about him as far as what you need to do with him the last 24, 48 hours to get his mind right for tomorrow night? Um, I think uh, you know, JR is one of the most resilient guys I've ever been around. Um, I think it just comes from not only you know him personally, but his household, his mom, his dad, his brothers, his sisters, and I mean not his family now as well. Um, he he took that he probably took that loss as hard as anybody the other night, um, just as anybody on the team. But um, one thing about Jr. he has a, an uncanny ability to bounce back, and um, and I think people have seen that you know throughout our postseason runs where. You know, he hasn't played well or played to his ability that he think he should have played. And then, you know, the next game he comes out and shoots the ball extremely well and just, you know, just very locked in. And, um, you know, for me, um, I, don't, I don't really have to, I don't think I need to say anything to JR. I mean, I've been knowing JR since he was in high school. I mean, it's not like he's a new teammate of mine or someone I just met. Um, JR knows what I expect out of him and he expects things out of me and we just try to go get it done. Mark in the front. From Mark Medina, Barry, and News Group. Along the, the line of questioning regarding Le, the LeBron rules, when you're getting different defensive coverages and switches with different personnel, what sort of things are you reading and trying to take advantage of? That? I mean, I think it's all about uh, you know angles and um, and you know for me seeing you know things before they they happen. Um, you know, being able to, to, to beat a defender that's in front of me, but understanding there's going to be multiple guys either stabbing at the ball or rotating or poking at the ball or just putting bodies and hands in front of me. So, you know, you have to be you have to be strong with the ball, first of all, and especially against a Golden State Warriors team who's so great with their hands, either from Steph, you know, Draymond. Obviously, um, you know, Iggy hasn't played in game one yet, but in the past, we you know, with Iggy, uh, Sean Livingston, and the rest, the rest go on. They're so good with their hands, you have to be very strong with the ball. So... Um, you know, being able to read and react to the defense, being able to, you know, not only get past your guy, but know when the rotation has happened and being able to put the ball, you know, on time and on target to your teammates. So uh, there's a lot of things that go on, and I just try to read and react and, and know what's going on um, throughout the course of a game. And it may change from quarter to quarter. Um, coaches make adjustments. Players make adjustments on how they guard you. And then you have to be just – you have to always be on your toes on, you know, seeing that, you know, throughout the course of a 48-minute game. How are they different defensively without Andre so far? Um, well, they're damn good with him, and they're good. They're damn good without him. Um, no matter offensively or defensively, they listen. Uh, I mean, they can. They've sitting out. 
They've had a, a two-time MVP sit out playoff games and they've won. All right, in the postseason, they're good. <laughs> they're great, actually. <laughs> so let's not get too far on that. Chris, Chris, last question Chris, in the back left. Chris Haynes, ESPN. Ron, when, when you first came in the league, the only time you would hear from criticism would be from, I guess, us media members. And now with social media and people come up with these memes and these creative bits and whatnot. How have you adjusted to that as far as, I don't know if you engage or look into that, and, and secondly, how have you noticed your teammates or your peers, how they, is it a ne negative effect on them um, if, they're, if they consume that too much? I think it, it comes with growth. Um, I think it comes with um, you know, understanding what, 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 what matters and what doesn't matter in your life, in your personal life. Um, you know, uh, for me, it, it, it took time. I mean, like, I mean, obviously, I mean, I came in in the NBA before social media. Um, you know, I don't know how many people are, are part of the league before social media that's in here, but I see a few of you got some some great hair guys in here. So you guys are definitely around then. Um, so, you know, I, there was, you know, you could hear criticism, but it, it took four or five people to finally get to you. You know, if the criticism happened, and then as you get into the the later, you know, years of the 2000s, then you start the social media thing, and you know everybody's excited about it. You know, everybody is like, okay, just a, the touch of a finger, you can post something or see something. Everybody's, ex you know, it's like it's the greatest thing ever. And then if you like a, a a celebrity, then you realize it's actually really bad for you. You know, if you pay attention to it, like if you really pay attention, there's people out there that really try to like tear you down and you have to realize that one you don't know who they are two they don't know what they're talking about three they've never stepped in the the the, the your shoes or been in the light to understand what it means to have to perform or whatever the case may be there's there's like i guarantee there's doctors and surgeons and cops and and firefighters and people like that that's on social media and people are like roasting them too you know, you, you can't really like, and as you get older, you realize you like, I'm going to do what I do. I put all my time into my craft. I give it all that I have and I live with the results. You can't get involved in that. So I can only speak for me. I've learned how to laugh at the memes that come through. I learned like if it's like someone that's trying to, you know, kill me in a, in a fashion to laugh at that too, because it's funny at times as well and not take too much into it. I can't sit here and tell you how my teammates go about it because at the end of the day we all go to our separate homes when we after practice and we all to our separate rooms when we're on the road so i don't know how much scrolling goes on but if i have some words of advice if you're a part of it and it bothers you then you probably should just delete it off your phone that would be if it bothers you thank you lebron kevin love will be up next